I don't just talk about other people's stuff. I also make my own. Books in particular. To date, I have four books you can check out on Amazon. Operation Red Dragon, The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, Occult Mafia, Emerald of Maddox City, and the short story collection Assorted Absurdities, Tales of Kaiju Punk, and Other Genres. Hop on down to the description for Amazon links to all four books. Enjoy whichever ones you read, and enjoy the video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Omni Viewer, and as mentioned yesterday, there's a new MonsterVerse series coming out for Apple TV that we have confirmation will include Godzilla in it. Now, when I actually made that video and was uploading it, I swear that was all we knew. But a couple more articles have come out that have provided a few more details and I'm here to address a couple of other things I wanted to discuss, answering certain questions and making certain bits of speculation. I think the first thing I'll address is the question I'm sure everybody is asking. Why Apple TV? I mean, HBO Max is right there, isn't it? That's where Godzilla vs. Kong debuted, that's where the other MonsterVerse movies went eventually, that is the Time Warner streaming service, why is this series going to Apple TV? And for that matter, why is the Kong series going to Netflix? Well, I, I don't know. I don't really have any insider information, and quite frankly, I doubt anybody truly does, because if they did, this wouldn't have come as a surprise to everyone. But, I do have a few theories. My first theory is that maybe it has something to do with the recent merger. There's actually been a merger going on between Time Warner and AT&T. Well, more specifically, AT&T bought Time Warner. And if you've been following news about the DC movies, you might know that's been causing a little bit of friction on that front, certainly. But I have a feeling that maybe the merger has something to do with it. Whenever something like this happens, Priorities get reorganized, deals get changed, people get fired or moved around. You know how it goes. So maybe this was somehow part of it. How it would factor in, I have no idea, but I mean, it is a factor that's worth considering. The second possibility could be that it's just a matter of accessibility. You see, HBO Max is actually not available in all territories. Just because it is a streaming service and it does have uh, several territories it goes to, that doesn't mean it goes everywhere. It's not available in various parts of Europe, for example. However, Apple TV is available in much more areas, just like Netflix. It is a global platform. And maybe that part comes from Toho. Maybe the Toho execs said that since they want Godzilla to become a global icon again, they want anything that he's in to be as widely accessible around the world as possible. So don't dump this series on a streaming platform that's only got so many areas people can see it. Just put it somewhere that anyone can see it, and everyone can see it. They still have to pay for it, obviously, but at least you can actually pay for it to get access to it because it's available to you. Maybe that's part of it. Again, I don't know, but I have a feeling that could have been part of the deal. Now the third possibility is that maybe HBO Max isn't much longer for this world. There are conflicting reports going around as to exactly how successful all of these subscription streaming services have been. And the reason there are conflicting reports is because all of these streaming services seem very reticent to actually release their numbers. Even if they're good numbers, they want to play everything very close to the vest, so we have no idea. But, word gets out every now and then that subscriber counts have plummeted for one reason or another. That subscriber counts maybe have gone in a steady incline, but not necessarily as much of an incline as would be acceptable to justify the cost of running it. There are all sorts of different things. And there have been rumors circulating around for a while now that HBO Max might be merged with some other streaming service that AT&T has access to. I think Discovery Plus was one that was being floated around. But again, all of this is in a constant state of flux, it seems. And besides which, you know, streaming services clearly have not played out the way anyone predicted, at least 
most people. You may recall back in 2020, everyone was saying streaming services are the way of the future. They're going to do in theaters. Now that people are just stuck at home and they know that these streaming services exist and they can get movies and shows and everything on them, people have no reason to go to a movie theater anymore. And hey, movie theaters are inconvenient anyway. Streaming is the way of the future. But then 2021 came along and as soon as we were allowed to go back out again, what was one of the first places that people went to? The movie theater, specifically in fact to see Godzilla vs. Kong, but other movies as well, like Spider-Man No Way Home, and various others. And what did those same people who claimed theaters were dead suddenly start doing? They suddenly changed their tune in hopes that nobody would notice, saying, you know what, streaming services are regularly a detriment to box offices. They've taken away money from these movies that could have done amazingly in theaters, even better than they already were doing. Here I am just standing here saying, yeah, I called it again. How is my subscriber count still that low? I honestly don't have any clue. So clearly streaming has not gone the way anyone predicted it would. Not that it's going the way of the dinosaur, I'm pretty sure it's here to stay, but the, how it's going to be utilized going forward is clearly being reassessed. And I doubt that many of the streaming services that launched in recent years are going to necessarily be permanent. Heck, quite a few of them already went extinct. I mean, DC used to have its own streaming platform, then that died in favor of HBO Max. So there is precedent for it, and that's on the Warner Brothers front no less. Anyway, as far as I can tell, that's the best I can come up with for why the MonsterVerse series that's coming will be on Apple Plus, and also probably why the Skull Island anime is on Netflix. Of course, there is a fourth possibility. Maybe Legendary is just hedging its bets and putting series wherever they can, kind of like what Marvel did back before they had their own studio, just throwing their characters at every studio that would take them and seeing which one stuck. But again, I don't have any insider info, so I have no idea. Now, as far as staff goes, we do have a little information about that. I saw people pointing out in the comments that the writers of the show would be Chris Black and Matt Fraction. Now... Having looked into it myself and read the articles and everything, I don't see anything saying that they will be writers, per se. I see that Chris Black is going to be the showrunner and executive producer, and so will Matt Fraction. I didn't see anything that said they would be writers. Of course, showrunner does imply a certain degree of writing is involved, but as far as I can tell, no one has officially been announced as officially writing scripts just yet. Unless, of course, they're just including that as part of their whole deal, and if you want them, they have to write it. Again, not an insider here, I'm just speculating. Still, we know that they are on board, and among their credits, well, I guess I am a little bit concerned because Black was one of the developers of Star Trek Enterprise, which is one of the only Star Trek series that I've started but never bothered to finish. And Fraction worked on Hawkeye, which has not been getting the reception that Marvel stuff usually gets. But then again, who knows? I mean, Star Trek Enterprise, that was a bit of a misstep, just in general. I don't think anyone came away from that looking really good. And as far as Hawkeye goes, moods towards Marvel have been kind of mellowing anyway. Plus, you know, that's a Disney property, and Disney can be very, very controlling. I think we all know that by now. So maybe things will be a little bit different here. Maybe this will be a better fit for those two. Or maybe not. Maybe we should be concerned. But only time will tell in that regard. And finally, we have one last bit of info that will allow us to comfortably segue into the realm of speculation. The last thing we know for certain about this series, at least as far as this announcement goes, is that it will take place in that five-year gap between Godzilla 2014 and Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019. Now, I've seen in the comments that some of you guys are a little confused and maybe even concerned about this because, as far as we know, nothing happens in this area, and... Godzilla, at least according to the dialogue in King of the Monsters, 
has not been seen since the 2014 event. So how can he be in the series if he hasn't been seen between those two films? How do you do that without contradicting everything? Now previously, of course, the MonsterVerse did include something that was set between the two films, the comic Godzilla Aftershock, but the show and the movies are in no way beholden to that comic. And even if we do still count it as canon, that thing was set in 2014, immediate aftermath of the San Francisco event, and that still leaves us with the five-year gap. Now, of course, like I just said, the show and the movies are not beholden to this comic, so there's a possibility it will just be retconned out of existence. Or, maybe it will be adapted to the show, and that version will become the definitive version of that story, where the comic just becomes apocrypha. But, even so, what do we do about that gap? How do we work Godzilla into it, since he's apparently going to be in it? And how do we work him in without contradicting what was already said in the movies? Well, it turns out, King of the Monsters actually provides us with a bit of an out for this. If you saw the video I did about my biggest critiques with the Monsterverse, you will note that one of the things I said was how it felt like King of the Monsters was trying to imply a sprawling history between 2014 and 2019 that otherwise wasn't there. Talking about all this other stuff that happened involving Titans and things with Monarch and eco-terrorists and whatnot, but we never actually saw it, yet it was still somehow acting like that stuff was there, and that just kind of bugged me. Well, if this series really is set in that five-year gap, that might actually be the jumping-off point. We now know, and, or at least have a basic idea of what direction it could go in. It could be about Monarch dealing with Alan Jonah's eco-terrorist movement as they start hitting different Monarch sites trying to gather Titan DNA, or just finding ways to unearth monsters that aren't necessarily Titans, because remember, the Mutos technically are not Titans. They are just a species of monster. The Queen Muto, whatever, that showed up at the end of the King of the Monsters, that's a Titan, but not just the regular ones. But anyway, it could involve something like that. But that still leaves the question of, how do we get this guy involved? Because he's supposed to have not been seen since 2014. Well, it is still possible for him to show up, because let us not forget, only the public doesn't know where Godzilla is in this gap. Monarch does. And contrary to popular belief, there are still a lot of unexplored places in the world. A lot of places where people just don't regularly go. So, I have a feeling that this series might adopt the aesthetic of the later Showa films, and possibly even, dare I say, the Ultraman series, where most of the action takes place not in urban areas, but in pastoral areas. Places where you're not likely to find many human beings. It could be that a part of the plot involves monarchs trying to keep the monsters away from urban areas and thereby keeping them in these more unoccupied zones. Kind of like what Operation Red Dragon was doing before things went public. Legendary, we have a lot in common. Call me. Anyway, though, if that's the case, then you have a way for Godzilla to show up and play a role in things without being seen. He could appear in these areas where there aren't many people, do whatever he needs to do, and then go back. And maybe you have like one or two people who are eyewitnesses that are either hushed by Monarch or caught by the eco-terrorists or just aren't believed by anyone. But you could still have that. I think that could still potentially work. Godzilla could sort of just be there as he needs to be, and he can show up without anyone really noticing. It is possible. But let us not forget, Godzilla is not the only monster they said would appear in this series. It's been said other monsters will appear as well. So which monsters will they be? Well, the first and most obvious guess that I can think of are some of the original Titans. Some of the ones that we see in King of the Monsters, like Behemoth, or Scylla, or Skyla, however it's pronounced, I don't care. Um, or guys like that. Heck, we, you may recall there's an outpost in Loch Ness, 
where Titanus Leviathan is, you could have a Nessie episode right there. And that's one of the monsters I wanted to see show up at some point. So there's probably going to be quite an emphasis on original monsters here. And I'm down with that. I'm always up for seeing what some new monsters are capable of. But what about other monsters? Maybe ones that we already recognize? Well, let us not forget that they're still moving forward with movies as well as with these shows. The shows are just the things that are in development and being focused on really at the moment. Those are the first things announced. Movies are still happening, comics are still happening, the series are just the big announcements at the moment. So, let us suppose that there are other monsters they've gotten, either from Toho or from other companies, or maybe recognizable things from the public domain. As few as they are, there are some there. My guess is that if we're going to see other recognizable monsters in the series, besides Godzilla and Kong, well, we also know they still have Rodan, Mothra, and Ghidorah. I'm sure that was somehow part of the deal. But since they're still technically trapped in that five-year gap, I highly doubt they'll play active roles in the contemporary setting. It's possible we might get flashback episodes showing how they were contained. But as far as playing an active role in that five-year gap, highly doubtful. If they even show up, of course. As far as other monsters go, I think if we do get other recognizable monsters, they're probably not going to be the A-list ones, or maybe not even the B-list ones. See, like, suppose, just hypothetically, I am not saying that anything is confirmed here, but suppose hypothetically that Legendary somehow worked out a deal with Katakawa to license Gamera for the Monsterverse. They're not going to introduce Gamera in a TV show, or a streaming show, or whatever you want to call it. They're going to have him in one of the movies. But if they were to get some other Toho monsters like, say, Gezora or Varen, those are like C and D grade monsters. For as much as they have a cult following, they're still not as popular as, say, Biollante or Angiris or those guys. So, they would probably show up in this series. If Legendary has them. So that, that, that's just to give you a basic idea. Again, I am just speculating, I am just giving examples. I'm not saying anything is confirmed, of course. But... That would be my guess as far as that goes. The Monsterverse series is probably going to bring in smaller level, lower level, lower popularity monsters if those monsters are even part of the package deal. But again, all of this is speculation. All we know is who's running the show, that the show is part of the Monsterverse, it will be on Apple TV, and Godzilla will be part of it. Other than that, it's all up in the air. And this is where we will really have to tread carefully, because after spending so many years doing this, I've gotten used to having to do rumor control. And there was quite a bit of it leading up to Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and even Godzilla vs. Kong. There were people claiming that Legendary definitely had the rights to Anguirus, or definitely had the rights to Gigan or that Destroyer was absolutely going to show up because the Oxygen Destroyer was used. None of those came into play, of course. And you got to think that if Legendary had gotten those guys, they wouldn't have necessarily kept it a secret, or there would have been some kind of leak somewhere. But no, it didn't happen. Not to say it can't happen, but right now you're probably going to see a lot of articles and videos talking about what the future of the MonsterVerse holds, what will the next film be about, showing images that incorporate Biollante or Space Godzilla or those guys, and you cannot believe any of it at this point because it hasn't been confirmed. That's just clickbait. So we'll be careful going forward. I have learned how to disseminate information, I've learned how to separate rumor from fact, I've learned from mistakes where I've jumped the gun. I'm going to be as careful as I can when reporting on this news, for as long as I am able to report this news. And in the meantime, well, I've told you everything there is to know, I've said everything I can speculate on at this moment,
And where things go from here, well, I don't know, but I'm looking forward to seeing what the results might be. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. Congratulations, you reached the end. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to consider supporting us on Patreon. Of course, the other way to support us is to go to Amazon and check out our books. Operation Red Dragon, The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, The Occult Mafia, Emerald of Maddox City, and Assorted Absurdities, Tales of Kaiju Punk, and other genres. Also, check the description for links to DeviantArt and other platforms we operate. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.